Hi friends, Kamala here, and um, we are on a roll to reading um, Og Mandino's book. So um, it's very, very good. If you don't have it, go out and grab it or listen to it on YouTube, it's on there too. And I'll be sharing this video to YouTube as well. So we'll have it as there as a resource. So in my running today, I had um, been listening and reading this book called Atomic Habits. You may have heard of it. It is by um, Mr. Clear, I forget his first name. It is James Clear. Okay, so that's his name. And Atomic Habits, and it's just really, really well written, really. He just describes habits really, really easy to make and just the compound effect of them. Um, the improved in growth and yourself, the self-improvement part of it. So what I wanted to share with you is what I learned from that book. So I listened to a section of it on my run this morning for like an hour. And so when habits that we have, either good or bad, they start to create our identity. But what he was focusing on is when we only focus on one habit and we're ultra focused on that habit, whatever it is, it's creating our identity. When that, when that whatever identity that you have is no longer there, then you have an identity crisis. So that made a lot of sense to me. I've done that in my past. I, it's like whether it's a relationship or um, an, a business or a workout or an athlete or, you know, whatever that habit is, a soldier, um, you know, that when it's when we change out of that and we don't have another that was our only identity you can have an identity crisis so what that taught me and what i want to share with you is that um you know your identity should be like water everything should be very small doses of what your identity is um for example it should be subtle it should be um it should be simple, it should be um, soft, it should be flexible, pliable. It should flow like water, as he explains, which that made a lot of sense to me. So if your your identity becomes too rigid and too focused, then you are setting yourself up for an identity crisis. And you've seen it in individuals when they have that. If they, if I can give you an example of like what the example he gave me, which made a lot of sense, I've seen is like a business owner that becomes a CEO that CEO, if they don't, they're no longer CEO, that was their only identity, and you take that away from them, you get a lot of um, reaction from that person. So they can, you know, throw a fit, or they can do a lot of different things, they can become, you know, angry, or whatever their thing is. But um, if you're not completely focused on that, and you focus on the actual system of CEO, like you're very dedicated, you're a good leader, you um, focus on the goal oriented and you develop a system in that plan of a business that's pliable, it's flexible, it can move into another position, it can move into a new part of your life. You take all those skill sets and then you move it there. So I just thought that was interesting. That's just an example. But um, so another thing I learned is lack of self-awareness. So as you're building habits throughout your life, in your life resume, you're building these habits. You need to change some habits and you change them by being self-reflective. So your self-awareness, if you're not self-aware, it is poison. So the antidote of self-awareness or the lack of self-awareness, the antidote is reflection and review. So reflection and review allows you to remain conscious of your own performance. So that's very important. And then um, they also give the example of building. So you build a building one brick at a time, just like you build a habit, one habit at a time. Each habit you're going to compound on top of the next. So it's a layering effect. It is um, building. So one little habit you build one moment at a time, but you don't ever stop. That's the antidote right there. You don't stop building when you're building, even when you don't feel like it, you keep building. So you build a system, you build the system, the system isn't gonna fail. 
you build it one habit at a time, one step at a time, but you just keep going, you don't stop. So they um, give the example as well, which made a lot of sense and I like this a lot. So you can build remarkable, remarkably when you don't stop, okay? So you can build a business when you don't stop working, a remarkable business. You can build a remarkable body when you don't stop training. You can build a remarkable knowledge when you don't stop learning. You can build remarkable fortune when you don't stop saving. You can build remarkable friendships, which is my favorite, when you don't stop caring. Think about that. We can build remarkable friendships right now. Social healing. Build those friendships. Okay. So that was my little reflection. And then on my scripture reading that... Um, resonates with that information i always go to this book which gives a lot of scripture of our brain and how we can do it so deuteronomy 30 19 i call heaven and earth to witness against you today and i set before you life and death blessing and curse therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live so ah, that's so important choose life we are life breathers you don't breathe death into people. You don't tell them you must feel like shit. Never tell that to anyone because that's breathing death into them. And we are life breathers. We've all made mistakes in our life. We've all made um, bad habits. Now we change them. We self-reflect and we change them because we're life breathers. We breathe life into ourselves. We breathe life into other people. So God says, he's witnessed against you today, and I have set before you life and death. And then it says in Matthew, for by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. Your words, our thoughts become physical manifestation. Our thoughts will become concrete. So if your words are showing up that are negative, then you got to take a look back at your thoughts. So... Always, Matthew 12, 37, always check our words, our words, the habit of those words, check that. Romans 14, 12, yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. Galatians 6, 5, each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Doing the creative best you can with your own life. Self-reflection, let's check that. Psalm 119, open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. That's amazing. Oh, I love it, you guys. Oh, it fills me up to share that. I love sharing information. So Agme and Dino were in scroll number four, which is totally awesome. I love this one too. All of these are great, you guys. These are affirmations. You could come up with your own affirmations too, but the suggestion is morning, noon, and night, you review the affirmations because that is going to fill us up with those words, those thoughts, those habits. 1% every day, just like one step, you can build great things. You can build a great you. One step at a time, one affirmation at a time. Build, but don't stop building. Keep going. Okay, so scroll mark number four. My kids are in homeschool right now, so they're doing a Zoom call. I am nature's greatest miracle say that. I am nature's greatest miracle. How does that feel? Isn't that awesome? We are. It's the truth. If truth feels good, that's in alignment with our heart, our words, our spirit. So it's all in alignment that brings in harmony. Since the beginning of time, never has there been another with my mind, my heart, my eyes, my ears, my hands, my hair, my mouth. None that came before, none that live today, and none that come tomorrow can walk and talk and move and think exactly like me. All men are my brothers and sisters, yet am different from each. I am a unique creature. Although I am of the animal kingdom, animal Rue's words alone will not satisfy me. Within me burns a flame which has been passed from generation, generations unaccounted, and its heat is a constant irritation to my spirit to become better than I am, and I will. I will fan this flame of dissatisfaction and proclaim my uniqueness to the world. None can duplicate my brush strokes. None can make my chisel marks. None can duplicate my handwriting. None can produce my child. And in truth, none has the ability to sell exactly as I. Henceforth, I will capitalize on this difference 
for it is an asset to be promoted to the fullest. I am nature's greatest miracle. Doesn't that sound awesome? Vain attempts to imitate others no longer will I make. Instead, I will place my uniqueness on display in the marketplace. I will proclaim it. Yes, I will sell it. I will begin now to accept my differences, hide my similarities. So too will I apply this principle to the goods I sell, salesmen and goods, different from all others and proud of the difference. I am a unique creature of nature. I am rare and there is value in all rarity. Therefore, I am valuable. I am the end product of thousands of years of evolution. Therefore, I am better equipped in both mind and body than all the emperors and wise men who precede me. But my skills, my mind, my heart, and my body will stagnant, rot, and die lest I put them to good use. I have unlimited potential. Only a small portion of my brain do I employ. Only a paltry amount of my muscles do I flex. A, a hundredfold or more can I increase my accomplishment of yesterday, and this I will do beginning today. Never more will I be satisfied with yesterday's accomplishment, nor will I indulge any more in self-praise for deeds which in reality are too small to even acknowledge. I can accomplish far more than I have, and I will. For why should the miracle which produced me end with my birth? Why? Why can I not extend that miracle to my deeds for today, I am nature's greatest miracle. I am not on this earth by chance. I am here for a purpose, and that purpose is to grow into a mountain, not to shrink to a grain of sand. Henceforth, I will apply all my efforts to become the highest mountain of all, and I will strain my potential until it cries for mercy. I will increase my knowledge of mankind, myself, and the goods I sell. Thus, my sales will multiply. I will practice and improve and polish the words I utter to sell my goods, for this is the foundation on which I will build my career, and never will I forget that many have attained great wealth and success with only one sales talk, delivered with excellence. Also, I will seek constantly to improve my manners and graces, for they are the sugar to which all are attracted. I am nature's greatest miracle. I will concentrate my energy on the challenges of the moment, and my actions will help me forget all else. The problems of my home will be left in my home. I will think not of my family when I am in the marketplace, for this will cloud my thoughts. So too will the problem of the marketplace be left in the marketplace, and I will think not of my profession when I am in my home, for this will dampen my love. There is no room in the marketplace for my family, nor is there room in my home for the marketplace. Each will divorce from the other, and thus will I remain wedded to both. Separate must they remain or my career will die. This is a paradox of the ages. I am nature's greatest miracle. I have been given, my, given eyes to see and the mind to think, and now I know a great secret of life, for I perceive at last that all my problem, discouragements, and heartaches are in truth great opportunities in disguise. I love that. Let me reread that. I have been given eyes to see and a mind to think, and now I know a great secret of life, for I perceive at last that all my problems, discouragements, and heartaches are in truth great opportunities in disguise. I will no longer be fooled by the garments they wear, for my eyes are open. I will look beyond the cloth, and I will not be deceived. I am nature's greatest miracle. No beast, no planet, no wind, no rain, no rock, no land, lake had brought forth with purpose. In the past, I have considered this fact, but it will henceforth shape and guide my life. I am nature's greatest miracle. And nature knows not defeat. Eventually, she emerges victorious, and so will I. And with each victory, the next struggle becomes less difficult. I will win, and I will become a great saleswoman, for I am unique. I am nature's greatest miracle. So there you have it, friends. I love this. This is such a great example. Agmandino, um, the greatest secret in the world. So awesome, awesome words to live by, to think about, to meditate on, and just um, be aware. So self-reflection, little tiny habits, small little steps, but don't stop. You just keep going and you keep moving. 
based on the faith that we have, based on the um, review and reflection. I mean, it just all 